guys, Versace here. Uh, I'm back with lesson two of writing this week. So apologies that it wasn't me um, for the last couple of days. You might have enjoyed seeing some other teachers though, which would have been nice. Um, but I'm back today and I'm ready to go with our learning today. So we're learning to write by selecting appropriate grammar and vocabulary. I'm just gonna get rid of this bit over here so that this comes up a little bit bigger on our screen. Okay. So before we start writing today, yesterday, Monday, you should have written your beginning to your narrative for your daydream. So today you need to uh, firstly edit what you wrote yesterday because you didn't get a chance to do that. So read through your beginning. Does it make sense? Try reading it to someone else or get someone else to read it to you. Okay, really try and break it down and listen. Have you got pauses in the right places? That kind of thing. Edit part one. So firstly, remove anything that you don't need and add anything that you do need. That's a bit of a tricky concept. So try and do those one at a time. Um, there might be some bits that you think, oh, I've given information there and it's really not necessary, in which case, get rid of it, okay? And there might be some bits where you think, mm, I haven't given enough detail. Maybe I can add parenthesis and put something extra in there. Um, edit part two. Use your success criteria. So you've got that in your documents. Uh, and your support sheets, which should also be in your documents, and there's some at the end of this flip chart as well. Uh, use that and tick off anything that you have used. Make sure you don't tick it if you haven't used it, so you won't be able to tick middle or end yet because you haven't written them. Uh, read it again and again throughout the editing process to ensure that it flows, to ensure that it's cohesive, all right, that it all links together nicely and there's no bits that stand out as being a bit jittery. Okay, that's your first task. I suggest have about 15 minutes for that. All right, so pause the video, look back at what you wrote yesterday and uh, edit, 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 okay? And then come back and we'll carry on with today's uh, writing that we're gonna do. So, uh, there you go, there's your success criteria. Can you take anything off? Today, we shall pick up our story from Peter finding the object and we're going to move into the daydream and explore the problem. So we're doing the middle bit. So questions you've got for the middle to help you. So you should have your planning sheet that you did last week. What can the object do? How did he find out? Who did he use it on? Why? And what happened to them? So hopefully you've got that mapped out in your mind and you should be working on from what you wrote last week. Okay? Now, I'm not going to go through this too much because there's a lot of writing here for you to look at and it would be a lot for me to read out to you, which would make the video quite long and take away from your time of doing things. But here is the, the middle of The Vanishing Cream, all right, the chapter that we've, one of the chapters that we've read. So have a read through this and look at the structure, see how they've done it. So they've got a paragraph to show Peter going into his daydream, how he realised the object was magical. They've got a paragraph to describe the characters who Peter would use his object on and why they would. They've got a paragraph, or maximum two for us, to describe Peter using the object on the characters. All right? So you can have a look at that and maybe you could try and follow that structure with your object and your characters and your setting. All right? That'd be really great. On the next slide, it just breaks down the different types of uh, grammatical features that you might use, okay? So you've got fronted adverbials, you've got pronouns, um, or there's a pronoun, you've got possessive pronouns, uh, you've got uh, speech and your inverted commas, you've got dialogue, okay? There'll be expanded noun phrases as well. So have a look through that and see if there's anything that you can magpie, things that you can use and put in your own work. But for now, I'm going to move on to showing you what you're going to be doing today. So, I've just said, we're picking up our story from uh, the end of our beginning. So you must look back at where your beginning ended because it needs to flow on from that. Okay, there can't be a big lapse of time in the middle unless you explain it. Um, but we should be going straight from Peter finding the object into realising it's magic. So... Last week I chose the pen as my object, didn't I? Um, I'm going to choose Kate as my extra character and I'm going to have it set in Peter's home. Those are my choices. You've got your own and we, we decided those last week. 
and I've decided that my last sentence at my beginning is going to have been, it had magic marker written along its side. Okay, so I'm talking about the pen. He's found the pen and it had magic marker written along its side. So now I need to carry on with my story, but I need to start answering these questions to talk about the middle. Okay, so I'm having a think at what I could write here. Uh, I might start this bit with some speech. I might have Peter saying something. Um, so Peter might say, it says magic marker, so I'm gonna link to that and make sure that I, I carry on in my writing flows. So I'm gonna open my inverted commas, I need capital letters to start, and I'm going to say, I wonder what's so magic. about it, comma, inverted commas, Peter, I'm going to say he smirked, because he's sort of making a joke there, because it's called a magic marker, so he's thinking, oh, it's magic, little does he know, it will be magic, uh, Peter smirked to himself, as he I'm going to say as he removed the lid okay what can I have next so I've got a bit of speech there well if he's removing the lid then I suppose next he'd be drawing with it wouldn't he doodling or something uh, so I'm going to say he so I've got a pronoun there rather than Peter again he began to doodle in his, I'm going to say in his notebook. Oh my gosh. Sorry about that guys, I don't know where that come from, came from. He began to doodle in his notebook. What's he going to doodle? I'm going to say that he's going to doodle a cloud, a cloud with some rain droplets coming from it. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, he began to doodle in his notebook. Um, I'm going to use a colon to illustrate that this is what he doodled into his note in his notebook. A cloud with rain droplets. falling from it. Okay, what would come next? I suppose next would be the fact that that cloud and those rain droplets would come to life, wouldn't they? They would actually maybe form above Peter's head, so maybe he'd be shocked by that. Um, with rain droplets falling from it. Uh, what could I say here? I'm going to say something like, Peter wasn't expecting what happened next. So hopefully that would make my reader want to read on. They know something's going to happen, but they don't know what. And then I'd have to go into detail as to what did happen. I'd have to explain that to my reader. Now you notice that when I'm doing this, I don't have all the answers in my head straight away. I have to think just like you guys do. Okay, so sometimes it takes me a minute to think, right, what makes sense to come next? That's fine, you guys are going to need to do that too. You won't know the answer straight away. You won't know exactly how you want to put this down on your page. That's all right. It's going to take some time, okay? We're the same too. 
Okay, so then moving on, I think I'd need to talk about who he'd use it on. So for me, it would be Kate, because that's my other character uh, in my story. And I think the reason for me that I would choose that he, he would use it on Kate is because she's, she's jabbering all the time. She doesn't stop talking and it really annoys him. He just wants her to be quiet. So I think I'd get him to draw Kate with a zip, a zip on her mouth. Um, and um, one that only he can control. So he can zip it up when he wants to. Uh, and obviously there'd need to be some thought about that. How would Kate deal with that? Um, how would the problem be solved? Uh, that would have to be thought about. But you guys will have your own problems that you, you've decided on, okay? So I'm gonna move on. You will carry on with this paragraph um, up to what happened to the person that he uses the object on. So there you go. There's some um, help with you there, relative clauses, the verbials of time, coordinating conjunctions and dashes for parenthesis. And then at the end, you're going to uh, do a bit of a success check, all right? Have you got these things on there? So for me, expanded noun phrases, looking back at mine, I don't think I've got very many expanded noun phrases. So I might say in his notebook, there's a noun. So I might call it, um, I need a, an a adjective, don't I, to make it an expanded noun phrase. So I might end that, M1. I have to put it down here for now because I haven't got another page. But I might say, well loved, a hyphenated word, doodle in his, uh, he began to doodle in his well loved notebook. All right, that gives it, that gives it a much clearer idea um, of, of what it looks like, doesn't it? Because um, I'd imagine it to be tatty and with lots of drawings in it already. Okay. Now, if you haven't finished by the end of this lesson, don't panic. We're going to give you some more time tomorrow to carry on writing this. Okay? Amazing. So, those are your tasks for today. All right? Uh, I hope you get on okay. It's really good to be back. Um, and I'm going to go off now and do your reading video for tomorrow. So I'll be back. Uh, I'll see you for chapter 17, hopefully. All right? Thanks, guys. See you later. See you tomorrow. Bye.